So, <laughs> um, what the heck? So what happened basically is I, um, I Googled it. I went, end up going with CreateSpace because I told you uh, due to Lulu's um, sizes and things, format sizes and sizes point blank when it came to cutting the book. It wasn't what I wanted. So I went with um, Create Space uh, at the time. I went through them. And in the beginning, once again, I was a new author. I was a new author, a self published author. I didn't have, I was looking at stuff online. At this time, it was very minimum. Like nowadays, you can go online, you can actually see uh, things, you can actually see blogs, you can see posts around self publishing because everyone is doing it. But back then, it was a newer type of business. Um, so no one really put like a lot of posts and everything wasn't really, wasn't that Googleable when it came to actually being able to find different things out. So when I actually first went with Create Space in the beginning to create my first book, I actually went through them and I took their ISBN number. So I took their ISBN number and when I took their ISBN number, it then becomes a property of Amazon, right? It, it's, it's not a property of me because Amazon owns that ISBN and I took that number, so now it's Amazon's property. Even though I wrote it, at the end of the day, Amazon owns the property to my book. And I'll get more into that as I go on. If you guys want to hear about the whole difference between making sure when you start that you do not get an ISBN through, uh, through any other entity and you buy your own ISBN, um, if you want to know more about that. I actually do have a video on my page around ISBN numbers and like where, where to go get them at and also barcode. So if you want to go and check that out, you can. Um, it's... Somewhere it should be underneath. Uh, I think I think I have a title where it's like uh, tips to becoming a self-published author or something on my um, YouTube. So go check it out if you want to know more about like the um, ISBN. But if you also want to know more of my journey through ISBNs, just let me know and I'll uh, I'll talk about it in a video. But um, nonetheless, I went through Create Space. Um, I found I actually found my first illustrator for my project. Because that was another thing. I, I was like, I, I've never journeyed into self-publishing. I never wrote a book before in my life. Um, yeah, I worked in the educational field, but I read books to people, but I never, and I read books to myself, but I never actually created my own book, you know, outside of maybe having our students in the classroom create like little books out of paper, but I never actually physically created a book myself. So I, I didn't know, um, illustrators. I didn't know, um, editors outside of like people that I knew in school or at the library or like my family. So at the time I had went back to LA cause my friend, I was in New York. I went back to LA cause my friend still lives in LA where I used to be at in, in California. And, um, we end up going to a panel or a seminar. Um, and somebody had mentioned a website called Fiverr. Um, I, I know a lot of people get on that website nowadays, but they said Fiverr and I was like, what's Fiverr? And at that time Fiverr was fresh. Like, so like a lot of what I, I, um, I went through back in the day and starting in 2012 and as it progressed, it was like, it was a lot of fresh moments. And, um, and I wish I could have been there to help you guys back then. Cause I, I just realized it, but at, back then I, I didn't have money to buy no camera equipment, nor did I have money to buy lighting and all that crap. So, Hey, I'm doing it now. Hopefully it'll help people in the, going forward because <laughs> I'm like, at that time, I didn't have it. So I, I, I couldn't really put it out there. I had my little camera phone. But at that time, I think I still had a flip phone. So like the flip phones wasn't really recording the way we're recording stuff nowadays. And uh, YouTube was like new. It, it just came out. It might have it might have popped on the team around like 2009, 2008-ish or something. So uh, it wasn't the platform where everybody was going to for advice. So hey, I'm hoping that this will help now. But nonetheless, I went out to California. I sat on... I, I, um, uh, we we heard on a panel a, a young lady talk about Fiverr and how it's a great resource at the time for uh, to get anything done for five dollars, and so I know nowadays everybody come to me and they talk about Fiverr, but and everybody says like the prices on Fiverr have like tripled or doubled or well doubled or tripled or quadrupled. Um, at that time, I literally went on Fiverr and I found my illustrator. Uh, I think he charged me, if I'm correct. 25 maybe 25 dollars a page um so even though it was fiber and he wasn't he didn't, he wasn't five dollars but now i know if you get on fiber now illustrators are charging like 60 100 dollars a page so it was like very minimum at that time as far as the pricing so you're talking about 25 dollars a page i made sure i always tell people this too and this is something that i feel like people might not know but when you're creating a book 
a children's book per se, any book that has like illustrations in it, if you are just giving someone your manuscript without an image of your characters, be careful. Because if they create a character out of your manuscript, even though you wrote that it was a dog or a cat, if they create their own image of that dog and cat and you don't actually give them something to go off, go off of, <laughs> excuse me, technically at the end of the day, that illustrator, and some people might argue that it's, that this is wrong, but from my knowledge, and I might and I might be wrong, I don't know, but from my knowledge, 910 that illustrator owns the copyright to that artwork. 